Okay, thank you. Um, good almost afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Shannon Koplitz, and I'm a grad student working with Daniel Jacob and Loretta Mickley at Harvard University in the Atmospheric Chemistry Modeling Group. And today I'm going to be talking about some work we've done investigating the meteorology that drives the transport of smoke from land use change fires in Indonesia, um, particularly focusing on an event that happened two summers ago in Singapore. Uh, and I'll also talk a little bit about our ability to capture these smoke events from space with satellites. Okay. Um, so the major driver of uh, fires in Indonesia is land use change associated with the development of oil palm plantations. Um, there's a growing global market for oil palm. Palm oil is uh, relatively cheap to produce. It's versatile. Uh, it's used in everything from biofuels to cosmetics uh, to food products like Nutella. Um, and over 80% of global oil palm production actually happens on plantations in Indonesia, uh, especially in these low-lying coastal peat swamp regions. Um, and when peat burns, it doesn't burn very hot. It smolders, uh, so you get a lot of emissions per unit area. So basically what's happening is you're getting a lot of smoke emissions very close to dense urban centers like Singapore is right here, Kuala Lumpur is up here. Um, and both of these cities have more than 5 million people. So lots of smoke emissions very close to dense population centers. And we've already heard about uh, from a few talks today the negative health impacts from PM2.5. And so um, these land use change fires are posing a very large, very immediate threat to regional human health. Um, so we really need to understand what's driving the, tr uh, the transport patterns of the smoke emissions to these downwind urban centers. Um, and also, potentially, can we see these events from space and be able to issue early, warning, uh, or early warnings in the next, during the next haze event? Okay. Um, so this, this clearing, to, clearing of land via slash and burn techniques for the oil palm plantations happens every year, so it's an annual occurrence, um, but the fire activity can vary year to year by a factor of 30 or more. And we really care about, uh, in particular, what's driving these high fire years because that's when we're going to get the most smoke. And typically, um, so there was a really big haze event in 1997. Uh, in 1997, emissions from fires in Indonesia released an amount of carbon that was equal to about one-third of the global mean annual carbon emissions from fossil fuel consumption. So the emissions from these events can be very huge. Um, and typically, when we see these big burning events like 1997 and more recently in 2006, it's uh, late in the burning season. So the burning season in Indonesia is somewhere between July and November. And we typically expect peak fire activity around September, October. Um, and we also expect there to be more fire activity during El Niños, which is, uh, um, there's a schematic here on the left, and also during a positive phase of something called the Indian Ocean Dipole, which is another oscillatory uh, coupled atmosphere ocean system, similar to the ENSO system, but over the Indian Ocean instead of the Pacific. And the reason you expect higher fire activity in both of these situations is because during an El Niño and a positive phase of the IOD, we get a suppression of the convective branch of the cell over Indonesia. So if you have a suppression of convection, you'd expect less precipitation um, and drought, and therefore higher fire activity. And so that's what we expect from these big haze events. However, uh, two summers ago, Singapore experienced record-breakingly bad pollution in June um, attributed to land use change fires in Riau province of Sumatra. So Singapore is right here. Uh, this is a satellite image of the event, and you can see these fire hotspots and the smoke just being transported directly across to Singapore. Um, so this was a pretty confusing event for us because, um, first of all, it was in June. As I said, the peak burning we typically expect to happen around September, October. Um, but June burning in Sumatra isn't completely unheard of. It happens sometimes. Um, what was more confusing was the fact that June, 30, June 2013 wasn't in El Nino. Uh, we were ENSO neutral and, if anything, uh, closer to La Nina conditions. Um, and we weren't in a positive phase of the Indian Ocean Dipole. If we look at sea surface temperature anomalies from June 2013, we see actually a fairly well organized negative phase of the Indian Ocean Dipole with cooler sea surface temperatures and temperature anomalies in the west and warmer anomalies in the east. And there's two things to notice about the schematic of the Indian Ocean Dipole over here. So during a negative phase, as opposed to suppression and less convection, which we see during a positive phase, during a negative phase, we actually expect there to be enhanced convection. So we would expect there to be less fire activity than normal under these conditions. 
Um, and the second thing is that during a negative phase of the IOD, we see a kind of stronger than normal westerly flow in the lower troposphere. Um, and in fact, if we look at what the wind fields look like during June 2013, um, compared to an average, we do see anomalies in the lower troposphere, uh, westerly anomalies in the lower troposphere on the order of five meters per second um, compared to an average. So this could possibly explain part of why June 2013, uh, the smoke in June, 20, thir June 2013 was lofted from the burning in Riau over Singapore, um, whereas it hadn't been in the past when we had burning in June. Um, but the thing about trying to explain this event only with looking at the ENSO patterns and the IOD patterns is that both of those systems are drivers of interannual variability. So they operate on timescales of, of years. Whereas what we saw during June 2013 was actually a, a shorter lived kind of sporadic pulse of westerly winds that lasted for about 10 days. Um, and the biggest driver of shorter time scale variability in the tropics is something called the Matt and Julian Oscillation, which is a convective system that organizes off the eastern coast of Africa and propagates from the west to the east across the Indian Ocean over Indonesia and out into the Pacific with a phase of about, uh, with a period of about 30 to 90 days. And what happens on the western edge of this convective cell, um, because of how the surface uh, pressure cells organize, is you can actually get shorter bursts of westerly wind enhancement. Um, and so looking at where the MJO was during, during June 2013, we actually see that, so the haze, the corresponding haze days are highlighted in red here, and these are the phases in blue of the MJO. And so you can see that during most of the haze event, MJO was in phases five and six, and then a little bit of seven. So primarily right over Indonesia, right where that western edge would be over Sumatra, driving this westerly pulse. Um, but as I said earlier, the, the winds were not the only interesting thing about this event because it was strange that we would have a lot of fire activity when we would expect there to be more precipitation than normal. And some work that's come out recently um, from, from Gebo et al. 2014 has investigated these fires and what they find is that even though June itself was anomalously wet, um, there was kind of a two-month dry spell leading up to that event which may have contributed and driven higher than normal fire activity. So there seem to have been some interesting things going on with both the fires and the winds during June 2013. Um, so what we did is we ran, ran some quick sensitivity studies with the Geoschem Global Chemical Transport Model, which I'm picturing on the left two panels here. Um, and so these panels are showing surface particulate concentrations over Singapore. Um, the black line is the same in both figures. The black line is using June 2013 fires with June 2013 winds. The top panel is June 2013 fires with winds from other years, and the bottom panel is June 2013 uh, winds with fires from other years. And what you can see is that, at least in our results, we are better able to reproduce the spike over Singapore that we see during June 2013 if we use June, 20, June 2013 winds with other fires. So um, we think that the, even though the fires were high, and that was an important part of this haze event, the, it was really these uh, anomalous surface westerlies caused by this combination of the MJO and the negative IOD that were driving this event. Okay, so now that we have an idea of what was causing this haze event, the next question is, okay, well, can we see it from space and maybe be able to, to do something in the future with issuing uh, alerts or warnings when the next haze event happens? So the bottom panel here is again showing surface particulate matter concentrations from observations in Singapore plotted against a couple satellite products, primarily uh, MODIS aerosol optical depth and OMI aerosol index during June 2013. Um, and this is also airing at AOD for reference here. And both of the aerosol optical depth uh, products seem to just miss this event entirely. And the only one that shows statistically significant enhancement coincident with the pollution event is OMI AI. Um, and if we look further back in the fire record uh, over Sumatra, we see the same pattern where um, so if we, if we apply a statistical threshold of the long-term mean plus three standard deviations, so that's what these lines are here, uh, indicating kind of extreme haze, um, we see that MODIS fire counts point out four big features, four big events. So February 2005, October 2006, June 2013, and March 2014, and OMI AI captures all four of these events, whereas MODIS AOD gets 2006 and it gets March 2014, but it misses February 2005 and June 2013. 
So there are some things to be reconciled here between these different satellite products, um, and we have some ideas about what's going on, which I'm happy to talk about af offline. Um, but the take home here is that OMI AI does a pretty good job of capturing these haze events from space. And so just to uh, wrap up, um, I kind of have three main takeaway points. The first one is that we feel that it's this combination of the kind of background wind conditions that were established under a negative IOD uh, in combination with the, the timing of the MJO moving across Indonesia that really allowed for these strong westerly winds um, that drove the transport of the smoke from the Riau fires over Singapore in June 2013. Uh, and this combination of the negative IOD and the MJO represents what we feel is a newly discovered pathway by which these land use change fires are impacting regional human health um, and really needs to be accounted for in future strategies to try to mitigate the health impacts from these fires. Uh, and lastly, it looks like uh, OMI aerosol index is actually potentially a very useful um, platform for uh, some kind of early warning indicator for air quality over this region. Um, and with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions from audience? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, this is kind of just one isolated event, and it's the first one that we've observed. Um, I think something to say here, though, is that we're just proposing the idea that, um, depending on how often this combined, these combined conditions of the, the negative IOD and the MJO happen, especially if we're going to get more burning in the future as there's more and more development for oil palm, um, it is just a possibility that it might happen more. Um, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think we're just saying that this is something that needs to be accounted for because it can, hap it can happen and it will. We get burning in June. It just might not have had these same wind conditions before. <laughs>